you. How long have you been working with this bike? I have personally been riding it about two years. They've had an ABS long. bike for two years? We've had an ABS bike longer than that. We've probably had it close to 20 years. They've had an ABS bike back. for 20 years? The CBR1000F. CB1000F. Look at that. CB1000F. There you go. See, you thought it was new. But then it had like springs and vacuum tubes and stuff. Now it's just a small little it's computer. Old news, yeah. exactly. That's right. Like everything else, it's small. It's small. Get it. Is it this panel here? Actually, it's, uh, it's on this side. Your ECU is here, and let's see. The motor is is in this area, and then the other motor is down there between the the uh, header pipes and the case. You can just barely see it if you look in here. Can and you, you can just see the uh, don't the burn little, uh, uh, heat shroud? Okay. Yourself. I'm Miller Farewell. I work in the technical training department here at American Honda. Excellent. So now uh, we just finished, or at least I just finished testing the 2009 CBR uh, 600 RR a ABS with anti-lock brakes, also available on the 1000 RR model. Correct. Correct. And uh, Miller knows everything about how this works. So we have these two <laughs> hunks of metal that uh, are probably pretty complicated and do something. So Miller's going to show us okay. what they're about and how they work. So on this bike, because it's so uh, densely packed, the designers chose to break the brake modulator into two parts. So we have a valve assembly, which is this one. Tilt this towards the camera. And this is a cutaway of it. Oh, it's a, yeah, this is a cutaway, all right. So stuff doesn't just fly out of there. And this is the uh, power unit, which actually has the modulator piston powered by electric motor and uses a, a ball screw mechanism to apply pressure to the brakes during ABS. Okay, now, so my understanding, and uh, certainly after riding the bike, by the way, it's still raining, which is great because I just <laughs> rode this bike in the rain, uh, was that uh, Honda's engineers had a couple of goals and uh, in mind of... That's right. What they wanted to do was to develop a, a combined ABS system that worked on a super, sp a super sports motorcycle and uh, gave the rider the, the, the performance capabilities of the super sports bike while giving them ABS and combined braking as well. Right now, I, now uh, one of the things that we talked about earlier uh, was uh, the fact that this that the bike would also uh, squat down and dive would be reduced because of the combined system. Is right. That, that's one of the goals of the engineers. Right. One of their goals was that uh, we get full braking from both wheels uh, under those conditions where the rider wants them. So as you apply the uh, rear brake or front and rear brake, the motorcycle will tend to settle as opposed to nosedive and then as you keep applying the brakes if you want that very quick stop the both wheels will get uh, the maximum braking right. power we can and once we get to ABS where one of the wheels is going to lock up then ABS will come into into play and, and prevent that wheel lock up. And um, I guess at least from my from my experience now riding the bike, the, the bike seems to perform more. We're going to have to go inside. It's starting to rain real hard here. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, getting wet. Yeah, yeah. Performs like a, like a standard uh, or a motorcycle with conventional brakes. Now that was one of the goals of designers, I, I guess, to make it to make it uh, so the combined system doesn't take over. It's not, in other words, it's not dumbed down. Well, it's a it's a combined braking system for a super sports motorcycle, which is different than say a sport touring bike like the VFR or the ST1300 or even the Goldwing, which all of those bikes have, uh, it, uh, you can get them with ABS. And uh, uh, this is a super sports motorcycle. We wanted it to retain that, that super sports performance, but also have this other capability. Um, now, one of the other things that I, I thought was important to note was that the brakes uh, operated uh, in uh, normal, uncombined, unassisted mode, uh, unless you were beginning to activate the system, That's I, right. I think. Yep. And uh, the other thing I thought that was important to note was that uh, when the ignition was off or if the power failed, that you would still have conventional braking. That's right. If there is uh, ever a, a technical problem with the system where uh, it goes into uh, fail-safe mode, basically you go back to traditional brakes. Squeeze the lever, brakes work. Step on the pedal, brakes work. But they don't work together, though. All right. Well, I think, you know, it's pretty wet out, so we're, we're going to head inside and have some food, but uh, idea. thank you very much. Here's You're your, welcome. Here's your pieces of metal. <laughs> Thanks. Sure that, uh, Thanks. You know how they work. All right. Well, you're going to know.